A hydrogen truck is now cheaper to buy than an equivalent diesel vehicle. Yes, folks, that is exactly what we've learned from one of the very first customers of Nikola Motors' hydrogen fuel cell truck, which went into production just last quarter. This one customer in California has been one of the very first to report on its use case, the cost of owning and operating this vehicle, as well as the infrastructure concerns that many people have had when it comes to Class 8 hydrogen vehicles. And because of that, there's certainly a lot we can learn as journalists around the hydrogen revolution and how these trucks can play a role in the decarbonization race alongside battery electric. And that role is exactly what I'm going to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. First things first, folks, let's understand some numbers that Nikola Motors just released around their production and delivery for their hydrogen electric truck. The tray, which went into production in the third quarter of 23 and went on sale in the fourth quarter, has delivered around 35 units with a production count of around 43. Honestly, that is a pretty impressive number given the fact that the main market for this vehicle is basically Southern California and that right now there's still a lot of companies that are exploring the viability of hydrogen, notwithstanding the insane financial burden companies could potentially face. And as for why exactly I say that, well, because hydrogen is obviously very expensive to run, buy and maintain right now. There's no question about that. Any early stage technology at the low volumes that we are at right now is going to be expensive. And fuel cell trucks are no different. But that does not mean it's not worthy investing in these technologies at an early stage and to bring much better products on the road, which certainly benefit the trucking industry much more than they ever will in the consumer business. And that benefit is being vividly realized by a handful of the early customers of the Nikola Trey FCEV. Bill Hall, who left his job as a senior marine engineer at the age of 59 and started his own container logistics business, has been one of the very first companies to purchase the Trey at a price of almost $250,000 after incentives. And at that price, Bill says that this vehicle is competitive with equivalent diesel trucks that the company was shopping for at that same time. Now, obviously, this is after a hefty 360K incentive from the California state. But as we all know, every major technology has been subsidized at the very beginning. And it's really the only way to get the ball rolling in a country where capitalism outshines basically every other aspect of business. Not only that, but more importantly, Bill mentioned that after using the vehicle for about two weeks, he noticed that refueling the truck has not been as major of a hurdle as the media and many skeptics have pointed out. He mentions that it takes just around 22 minutes for him to fill up the vehicle to get around 500 miles of range, and he is federally regulated to get a 30-minute break on an 11-hour day anyways. And at current cost of hydrogen at the pump of around $16 per kilogram, the cost is essentially nearly the same as filling up an equivalent range diesel semi truck. Now, this price isn't guaranteed at every single station because logistics and supply chain is still incredibly variant for where the hydrogen is produced from to where it is actually delivered. But it is certainly expected that over the long term, with economies of scale as well as back in investment, the cost will come to parity. Because although the rest of the country has no hydrogen infrastructure on a retail level, there is a lot of hydrogen infrastructure on the wholesale level. Even when produced using natural gas, steam, methane reforming, hydrogen is still more eco-friendly than a diesel truck. Not only that, the weight is still a pretty big concern when it comes to scaling up a battery electric solution. Although anywhere between 200 to 300 kilometers, battery electric vehicles for semi trucks make a lot of sense. Anything over that for over the road or long haul, 
hydrogen will make a lot more sense from a financial, safety, and even cost perspective because of the significant drop in powertrain weight. And although many companies market their battery trucks to recharge from 0 to 100% in just about one hour, that is only possible at megawatt charging standards, which currently has not been built out at scale in the United States. Currently, with CCS, it'll take anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes to fully recharge a battery electric truck, not accounting for the buffer that many companies have to set to increase the longevity of the pack. Whereas today, you can fill up a fuel cell truck for 20 minutes, regardless of what state of charge you're at, and regardless of what infrastructure port you're using. And that in and of itself brings upon another important hydrogen argument, which is the idea that similar to gas stations today, with scale, it is actually going to be cheaper to build new incremental infrastructure compared to an electric system. Because for every electric vehicle added to the road, you need more charging plugs, which requires more power. But a single hydrogen dispensing station can service multiple hundreds of trucks, potentially a day or even a week, without requiring any sort of major investment in power or dispensing handling. There's obviously no such thing as a perfect solution, and Nikola certainly has their work cut out to deliver more of these trucks, but the recent reviews and data is certainly going in favor of the argument around using fuel cells for more industrial and heavy-duty applications. Not only is selling a new technology very hard and a lengthy process, but even building fuel cell trucks at scale is expensive, particularly in a country like the United States. So this is certainly something that's going to take time, and it's certainly going to be one worth watching. But as usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, folks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.